when you talk about 3D medical printing and 3D dental printing, uh, one of the companies who started very early in this field is uh, the Italian company 3Dific. And I'm talking today with Alessandro Ricci. He's the founder and also the CEO of the company. So welcome, Alessandro. Thank you. Um, let's start immediately. Uh, could, you, could you give me a short introduction of your company? Well, my company, Fridipic, was born in 2015. Uh, and we started as a company working in general with 3D printing. We are all 3D printing uh, excited people. Um, then we got uh, incorporated into the University of Perugia, the School of Medicine, where we started to relate with medical stuff. That was very interesting. It was the, be the beginning of a very, really an early stage for, for medical 3D printing 2015, 2016. It was very exciting. And we, we performed many challenging uh, activities in many different fields. That was one of the most interesting things of being into a university because we had the possibility to work in cardiosurgery, um, uh, thoracic surgery, uh, radiology, of course, uh, and uh, all sorts of uh, um, surgical related procedures, uh, which gave us a very big uh, knowledge uh, in the field. And then starting from that, we expanded in other fields uh, and in other countries. We worked with Russia, and we developed serious uh, capabilities in dentistry and in cranium maxillofacial surgery. And now we started a brand new activity all related to okay so so you mentioned you move into dentistry are there uh, is there an overlap between medical and dental applications uh, when we talk about uh, 3d printing uh yes the uh, expect the first overlapping is with uh, every um every area that is bone related hmm. so uh, everything that has a bone involved have has a similar uh, needs, similar dyna dynamics uh, with dentistry. They can use similar workflows uh, and they have similar um, activities. Okay. Uh, where they do not uh, overlap is uh, about the devices. So uh, when we talk about uh, surgical guides, for example, there is an overlap, even if materials are very different. But for plates uh, and other kind of devices, the other the overlapping is very small, in my opinion. Because you have other materials and and, and, and stuff, and other printers required. Yes, uh, yes, it's about the printer for sure. But uh, also the needs are different. So in dentistry, you don't usually uh, work with big plates. You you are um, you are migrating that uh, into cranium maxillofacial or other kind of surgeries. Um, but, uh, so you, you don't need that kind of knowledge when you want to create a plate or an implant when you, when you get to 3D printing. The other interesting thing is when, you, when we will be able to prepare our own implants. There are solutions like I prepared something like this, that is, is a custom device, a substitute for uh, for implants, for someone who cannot get implants, this is something that is borderline between dentistry and cranium maxillofacial. Okay, okay. So um, now I understand that you also introduce an app. Uh, why is why and what is the app, and is there a relation with three D printing? Well, this is something that uh, won't be very popular, as what what I'm about to say, but. I think that somehow the device uh, industry with 3D printing is reaching a peak. I don't see a, a big possibility of development uh, compared with where we got so far. So we can get more precise, we can get better materials, but substantial change, I don't see. Uh, what I see is that the future, the near future and the the long-term future of uh, 3D in medicine is uh, about imaging. So uh, I think 
think that there will be a dematerialization, what's, uh, if I may, in fact, in this word, uh, of, um, uh, of imaging. Uh, so we will switch uh, of our interest. Let's say now it's 80% 3D printing and 20% imaging. I think that percentage uh, uh, can reverse in a growing market. So that 20% uh, future will be bigger than uh, this current 80% because um, uh, hospitals and doctors are using 3D printing more and more for models, for, uh, for implants, for guides. They're using it very much. But I think imaging is easier to, to, to get. And uh, it's, um, its use is more frequent compared to 3D printing devices. So we developed an app that is involved with uh, the imaging and the artificial intelligence um, uh, solutions. Which means, so it, you can scan or something or you, or you can create a 3D model uh, virtually. Is that, is that that's the, the essence? Yes, we can uh, create, we more easily can create uh, uh, a model, a digital model from the, uh, from the CT for, for the medical, from the medical imaging mm -hmm. of the patient. Mm -hmm. That will uh, give uh, us a great boost on, uh, on the acquisition of digital imaging in doctors that eventually will lead to a uh, easier use, uh, easier access to, to 3D printing. Once, they, once doctors and hospitals will use the 3D imaging, uh, they, will, they will be more likely to get 3D okay. printing. Okay. okay, and you are, that, that app is only for your own use or are you going to, let's say, supply it to your customers or globally even? Well, we started, but of course, when you're talking about an app, you uh, you hope to get, uh, you aim to uh, to the world. So uh, we already have uh, users of the app uh, in South America, North America, India, uh, all around Europe. It's a very initial thing, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's not. Uh, uh, it's not generating profit so far, but the the fact that the doctors are interested it's it's very uh, it's very positive for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we uh, we will start, of course, in our country, uh, but we expect uh, a global de development. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Alessandro, for your short and brief explanation what you what you are doing and what you are planning to do, three D print from three D printing to uh, imaging. And I look forward to you, also your presentation at the upcoming 3D MedTech conference in February. So thank you very much. Thank you. Very excited to meet you there virtually. Yes.